Hey guys, it's Faith from Solar Flow, and I am back with a new video. Today's topic is all about the law of attraction and manifestation. So if this sounds good to you, please stick around, and if not, I'll catch you at another video. So where did the law of attraction come from? So, and what is it, right? For anyone who's not familiar with what the law of attraction actually is, what is it? Why are we even doing a video on it? So I would say that this kind of had its 15 minutes of fame starting somewhere around 20 years ago. And what happened at that time is there was um, a book by the name The Secret, which I believe was featured on Oprah. And then there was also a documentary with the same name called The Secret. And I don't remember all of the premises in it, but one I remember very, very clearly, which is if there's something that you want, like for example, a particular car, imagine yourself sitting in that car and the way that it's going to feel driving that car as if it is your own. And the idea behind it is that when you are focusing solely on the experience of what it is to have something, then it's kind of like you already are on the vibrational path of having it and then you can attract it effortlessly into your life. But for anybody that has actually tried this, you know that it's not quite that simple. You can't just think about, for example, wanting a million dollars and then like magic, it appears in your lap. It doesn't really work that way. So we're gonna explore some of the reasons why the common understanding of how we can just like line up with what we want and getting what it is that we want, why that doesn't really always work for us. And I'm gonna start by doing the behind the veil analysis of the way in which I saw that law of attraction works. And it was shown to me as bands. Um, but bands is kind of like a nebulous idea, bands or ribbons, but I'm gonna make it a little bit more like in the three-dimensional realm by comparing it to roads. And then I'm also going to say it's not just about the roads, but it's also about the um, GPS that we have on our phone and the way those two interact, because that is actually the way that law of attraction works in concert with our vibration. So what does this all mean? So for example, I'm going to say that for anybody that uses their phone as a GPS system for their car, um, like I do, then you're gonna understand this really, really well. And that's where you don't have like a freestanding um, GPS that's attached to your car, but it's on your phone and that the more you go someplace, the more your phone will actually learn where it is that you're going and then it will make recommendations for where it thinks you're going and how to get there. So for example, let's say every Monday I get in my car at 10 o'clock and I go to the gym. And every morning, when I, every morning on Monday when I get in my car, my GPS on my phone is going to show me or suggest as if I am going to the gym, it's going to show me all the different routes to go on. But let's say on this particular Monday, I'm not going to the gym, I'm going to the grocery store. So while I'm driving, it may continue to show me the different ways in which to get to the gym. So look at it this way. Through your experiences in the world, your GPS on your phone is learning you and it's learning your preferences. Now, Let's take that a step further. And let's say, for example, you're going someplace that you have never been before. So you're putting in the address and then the map is going to show you three different ways in which you can get to where you're going. And you can determine how do you want to get there. So one of those options might, for example, be um, the shortest route, but it's also not a very, very pretty route. So it's gonna be mostly like on highways and freeways. It'll, sure, it'll get you where you wanna go, it'll get you there the fastest, but it's not really particularly pretty. Then another option might be the longest route, but it's also the longest route because it's the prettiest. You've got lots of scenery, maybe it's like where I'm gonna be like taking the Pacific Coast Highway so I can see the sand, the sun, the surf, the ocean. It's beautiful, it's just the longest way. And then the third option might be something in the middle where it's a combination of both. So whatever my selection then will be is the path that my phone is going to keep me on until I get to my destination. 
That is very much the way that law of attraction actually works. The universe is learning you through your choices, through your preferences, in accordance with the way that you're responding to the world around you. And then based on those choices, it's going to bring you similar type things or maybe even different things to see, for example, if you still want to stay on that route. So for, for example, let's say I've decided I want to take the longest route. I want it to be pretty, but then I, I get off my route uh, to, for pit stop. I need to get gas and then while I'm at the gas station, the phone is now asking if I want to stay on the same route or if I want to change it. Keep this in mind because this is where a lot of people actually get kind of like wobble in their determination of what it is that they want because they're like, wait a minute, but I'm going where I'm going. Why is it suddenly questioning me? It's questioning you because there's a new variable. There's a new variation and life is always bringing us new variables that we get to then sort through and determine what way do I want to go to get to where I'm going. And then the universe will always respond in kind with the kind of vibration that we are on in lining us up with whatever it is that we want. So look at it this way. The universe, if you will, is kind of like the most badass AI. But this is benevolent AI. And here's another example. So say you're on a road. This road is where you decide one day that you love cooking. So you are going to all of these different websites. You're getting all of these new recipes. Then you go into Barnes and Nobles. And when you're in Barnes and Nobles, you go into the cookbook section. And then this is very much like in your energy field because it's something that you're really excited about. So then you get in your car, you're driving, and it's it could be someplace you've driven a hundred times before, but this particular time you're driving down the road and you see there's a storefront and they offer cooking classes. And you're like, well, how long has this been here? Has it always been here? Is this new? It is you're actually able to see it with fresh eyes because it's more what is in your energetic field at that time. So again, the concept that I always talk about, which is like this idea of energetic reverberations, where we do something and then our actions create energetic reverberations, it doesn't only apply to actions, it actually can also apply to what is in our particular energetic field. So that's why, for example, if somebody decides that they want to get healthy, you might be looking at things and then your the AI on your phone is learning what your interests are. And then you're going to start to see, well, I was looking at running shoes and then it's going to bring you targeted ads that are of running shoes. Let's say you have your running shoes right now. Now you are going running and now you're suddenly aware of all of these different people who are going running at the same time you go running. And now you've got yourself a whole new tribe of runners and healthy people because that is what is in your energetic field. So the universe, just like targeted ads on your phone, just like the AI that is in your phone, learns about you through what is in your energetic field. And the reason that manifestation usually does not work is because we are not an energetic match with what it is that we are trying to attract. So look at it this way. You are on your healthy kick. You are now a runner, but now you are trying to manifest a million dollars. Are you in any way an energetic match with your million dollars? If it's something that you've just started thinking of. Think about all of the cooperative components that have come up along the way in supporting you in the healthy lifestyle that you have chosen once you've lined up with it. So it's not so instantaneous, like I'm going to think about something and poof, it is going to appear like magic. It doesn't work that way. It is responding to what is in our current energetic field. That million dollars is not in your energetic field because you had that thought one time. And then you're like looking at your watch and you're like, come on universe. Everything that works with universal timing goes according to divine timing.
And now this is a great point to actually transition to what are some of the pitfalls that actually will get in somebody's way of trying to manifest what it is that they want. That is one of them. This idea that I want it now. Now, now <laughs> in the three dimensional, we definitely have this concept of, um, what do we call it? Um, instant gratification. And I joke and I say it's like instant gratification disorder, right? But look at it also this way, like has Amazon not really trained us all to have this level of instant gratification disorder? I order something and because of Prime, two days later I get it. Or some things you can even get the next day. So we've kind of all been trained into this idea of instant gratification disorder. I want what I want and I want it now. That works in the three-dimensional. That doesn't really work in the spirit world. And here's why. In the spirit world, 10 minutes or 10 years are exactly the same thing. There's no concept of time like we have here on earth. Because here on earth, the sun rises, the sun sets, the dates on the calendar changes, the years on the calendar changes. We're very, very aware of time passing. But in the spirit world, there's no such thing as time. That is a three-dimensional construct. So anytime we're trying to attract something into our life and we become aware of how long it's taking for it to come, that actually can cause, or it actually stands as a repellent. And it can, like two magnets that are not uh, polarity aligned with one another, you're trying to attract that magnet into you, but the closer you get to it, the more you're actually repelling it away because we become very, very aware of the lack of what it is that we want. So the best thing that you can do if you are trying to draw something into your life is to not think about it. Seriously, don't even think about it. And the reason I say don't think about it is because if we think about I want that whatever this is, I want this and it's not here. We just become aware of the lack of what it is that we want. And that is then not a vibrational match with what it is that we want. So how do we bypass this idea of I want what I want, but it's not here. How do you suddenly not think about it? And this is a hack that I've actually, I've actually used this and I've actually manifested things this way. And it's crazy. And it's not even, if I tried to do it again for the same things on the list, I wouldn't be able to attract them because I have changed and I'm no longer a vibrational match for them. So I'll actually share an example. Um, what, what year was it? Maybe, I forgot. I for, has this happened to anybody else since like uh, C19, like where all the, the years just kind of blend into each other? I don't even know what year this was. Maybe it was like, I don't know, 2020 but I was actually able to attract or manifest into my life what I thought was my dream job, my dream job working in fashion. And even though I had no experience working in fashion, I somehow landed my dream job working in fashion, working in the fashion industry. I don't, I still to this day don't even know how it happened, but I got it. Here's how I got it. Even though I said, I don't know how it happened. Obviously I do, or I wouldn't share this story. So I wrote, a list, five things, five things that I wanted to draw into my life. That was one of them. But it's not just like I was making like a shopping list, right? Like I'm going to Trader Joe's, I need to get milk, I need to get eggs, I need to get fruits and vegetables. It's not like a grocery list. What we're doing with this list is we are thanking the universe for what we have been able to attract into our life, even though we don't have it yet. So that is one way of hacking, if you will, the lack of what you don't have. It's where you're reframing it as if you actually have it. Because thinking about something as if you have it is a higher vibration. And this goes back to the example I had given at the beginning, which is like, think about being in the car that you want and then as if you're driving it. But that's not enough. You can't just think about what you want and be like, okay, I've done my vibrational homework. Now I'm a vibrational match for it. Be on the other side of it vibrationally. And the way that you're on it vibrationally on the other side is writing about it as if you already have it. So 
writing a list where you're thanking the universe and you are saying to the universe, thank you so, so much. I almost left my notebook again. Thank you so, so much for list those things that you are living in gratitude for because that is a surefire way of hacking your vibrational system. Gratitude. This is actually one of my number one life hacks, which is keeping a gratitude journal. And so when I was like really, really into this, I would probably gratitude journal three to five days a week. It was bananas. I cannot tell you while I was doing that, how much in my life started to change. It was really one of the kickoffs of my spiritual awakening, which is to be in so much gratitude of everything that I had. And in the beginning, it's a little bit challenging, right? Because we are very much living in the reality of whatever it is that we have or whatever it is that we don't have. But when we get in the habit of expressing gratitude for all that we have, the universe will deliver in kind right? It's just like when you decide that you want to get healthy, suddenly all of these things are lining up to bring you what it is that you want. And the way that we get there is by being aware of how much we have to be grateful for. And then the universe will deliver more things that we have to be grateful for. So you can set a timer. It can be 10 minutes a day. Maybe the first couple of days that you're going to do this are going to be a little bit rough. Maybe you might not even get past like three to five things that you have to be grateful for because the reality of your life is so compounding, right? It's like, oh my God, but I've got bills, pay. Like, how can I be excited about whatever money I have in my bank account? Because it's going to be gone with all the bills I have to pay. But you have money in your bank account right now. So I am so grateful for all the money that I have in my bank account right now. I am so grateful for the fact, whatever the heck it is, and then watch as, as you do this on an ongoing basis, how you will suddenly become more and more aware of all the things that you have to be grateful for. That list will get longer and longer. You might reach the 10 minute timer that you set and you're like, but wait, I have more that I wanna share that I'm grateful for. Turn that fucking timer off. Then just do free flow writing where you're just expressing all the things that you have to be grateful for. Forget the timer. And in a couple of days, maybe a week, maybe two weeks, you're suddenly going to be aware of the fact that you are writing pages upon pages of all the things that you have to be grateful for. Now, this is also a great hack of something that you can do if you're in a bad mood and you want to get yourself out of it because bad moods create bad energetic ripples. So one way that you can actually shift out of that bad mood is where you are sitting down and you're gratitude journaling. That's a great way of overriding, if you will, the mood that you are in because everything that we want to do in terms of law of attraction it is alignment based and it is vibration based but it's all about raising our vibration because as we raise our vibration we become more and more in alignment for other high vibration things that we want so it's not uncommon if you will that as you're raising your vibration where you might be in between two things that you want because the old things that you wanted have fallen away, but you're not maybe yet up to speed on the alignment of the new things that you want. So that is where I'm going to say, again, this idea of now. Respect where you're at because you might not yet be, like for example, going back to this idea of roads, maybe you need to merge onto a different highway, but to merge onto this other highway, you need to build up a little bit more momentum because you're merging from a road and onto a highway. So roads you're gonna drive slower on than on a highway. So you need to build up some momentum as you're getting onto the highway. This is very much the same idea. So build up that momentum and give yourself time as you're attracting it without the now, 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 I need it now, now, now. Now, now, what I also actually think is interesting is that if I tried to land myself another job in the fashion industry, I am no longer a vibrational match for it and I will not line up with it. I'm on a different road than that road. Maybe I'm on a totally different highway altogether. Maybe I'm on a totally different planet. 
but I won't be able to line up for that because I'm no longer a vibrational match for it. At the time that I was able to manifest that, it was because I was very much still living in like the, the, the dense three-dimensional, right? So I was more a vibrational match for it at that time. Now, even if I probably had like 10 years of experience in the industry, I wouldn't line up for it because I'm not a vibrational match. So vibrations matching with it, that is what the true essence of the law of attraction is. It's building up momentum to get onto the new road that you're merging onto and everything that is there while getting off of the old road. So it is very, very normal for things to start to fall away as we are changing our vibration, but we're maybe not quite there yet. Now, here's some other things that actually can act as a deterrent or a repellent, if you will, of trying to attract what it is that we're looking for. And here's a really, really funny one, the way that it came in, which is the universe doesn't compete, doesn't compute double negatives. So what's a double negative? This is the funny example. The double negative that came in is I'm not friends with Emily. So I want to make friends that are also not friends with Emily. Because the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Do you see how convoluted that is? Why not just think about what are the qualities of a friend that you want versus not this? It doesn't make any sense. So line up with, or, or be really, really clear. What are the attributes that you want of a friend beyond not a friend of Emily? So do you want a friend that likes to go shopping or do you want to make friends that like to go hiking? So think about the qualities and the attributes of the people that you want to line up with versus what they are not. Double negatives are just too convoluted for the universe to grasp. So leave it behind. Now, another thing that the universe doesn't compute with the law of attraction is anything that supersedes another person's free will. So stay in your own lane, so to speak. Don't be like looking over at the lane next to you and being like, hmm, I want that person's car. I mean, you can want that person's car, but stay in your own lane. Don't be looking at that person and being like, I want that person's life. And here's the example that came in for that, which is, What's an example of something that supersedes another person's free will? I want to attract Bob from bookkeeping, okay? But does Bob even know that you exist? So you're trying to draw in somebody, but don't focus on the who. Again, focus on the what. What about Bob do you like? Okay, so Bob... He's very thoughtful. He's very well-spoken. He's very witty. He has a great sense of humor. Focus on those attributes of Bob versus the Bob in particular. Because here's the thing. What if Bob from bookkeeping is married? That's not in accordance with your highest good. So two things the universe cannot compute is um, anything that supersedes another person's free will and anything that is not in accordance with your highest good. So being with a married man is probably not going to be for your highest good. So don't focus on the specifics, Bob, from book, bookkeeping. And as, instead, focus on what you like about Bob. He's thoughtful, he's witty, he's well-spoken. Now, maybe once you're crystallizing what it is that you like about him, you might now suddenly become aware of the fact that maybe Bob from bookkeeping has a coworker, Brandon. And Brandon from bookkeeping, he's single. And maybe he's witty. And maybe he's really, really clever. And maybe he's a bunch of things that Bob from bookkeeping isn't. And he's way better than Bob from bookkeeping for you. Because first of all, he's not married. And second of all, he's got all these other great, really, really cute attributes that you like that you didn't even know about because you were fixated on Bob from bookkeeping. So don't think about the who, think about the what. Those are really, really great ways of also drawing in what it is that you want because you're becoming more clear and you're becoming more specific about it, but you're also leaving room for all of these other things along the way that you wouldn't have necessarily noticed. Because again, let's say for example, 
Let me think of a good example right now. The one that keeps popping into my mind, and because I think this is a big one that we're all kind of thinking about, like we want more money, right? So let's say we're focusing on, oh, we want to attract more money into our life. But the way that we think we're going to attract more money into our life is by getting a different job that's a, a better paying job. It's a higher paying job. But if we're focusing on all of that, the physical manifestation of having a better paying job, then we might miss all of these other things that are coming into our sphere that have nothing to do with how hard we work. So maybe don't focus on the specifics of what it is that we want. Just focus on the what we want, but not the specifics. Again, the what, not the who. I want more money, but maybe it's not through the effort of getting a different job. That's a higher paying job. Because maybe there's all of these other really, really fun, exciting things along the way. Again, to tie it into a route on the road, which is the example of this might be, I want a better paying job. That might be the route on the road, which is the shortest route. There's no beautiful scenery along the way. It's just going to get us to where we want to go. But what if the other route that's available to us is the scenic route? It's the prettiest route. It might take longer, but there's so many more beautiful things to see along the way. That might be the equivalent of, I want more money. And I'm not particular about how it comes to me. Universe just brings it, just bring it to me. I'm open to how, right? It's not the who, it's the what. So focus on the what. And again, if you're in between two different vibrations, then you may not be a vibrational match with what you want yet. So everything in life is according to the laws of universal timing. So keep your eye on the big picture, the what, not the who, and then be amazed as all of these things start to come into you. Like attracts like. So stay on the highest vibrational version of yourself. Keep your eye on the big picture and not the minutia. Gratitude journal every opportunity that you get. And as I say in all of my videos, stay in the high vibration. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video and um, I hope that you have found it perhaps thought provoking or interesting. Please comment down below. Let me know how it's resonated with you. And yes, until next time, stay in the high vibration.